focus there we go hi I'm Danny and today I am here with a wrap-up for you this is gonna be a really big one so I'm not gonna talk about books into depth too much I'm probably gonna give a brief summary of what the book's about what I thought and it's reading because I got a lot of books to get through in this one this is a wrap-up from October to February. Okay, so these books will be in no in particular order. I've pretty much just got them stacked here on the bed. I did not put them in any order at all. I just grabbed them off the shelf and set them down. So here we go. First off, I reread A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole. Used to be an old favorite of mine and so I wanted to give it a new try and I listened to the audiobook. It will, I guess you could just say I listened to the audiobook because other than to actually bookmarked a few pages. I really didn't pick this up much. So I listened to the audiobook and I thought it was great. Although the girl voice was just a little off. It was pretty okay, but it was just a little off. I can find I find that with audiobooks, female author female narrators can do both male and female voice pretty good. But male voices trying to do female voices comes out a little too high pitched and squeaky for me. But I think the narrator did do a good job of this and re-listening to this has kind of rekindled my passion for the series and while I have only read about three books in this series I think I'm going to listen to the rest of them now. So uh, I gave this one originally I think I gave this a five star this time around I think I'd give it a three or four star but I really did enjoy it again. Next I think I, I read this one back in October and it is The Good, The Bad, and The Undead by Kim Harrison and this is a continuation to Dead Witch Walking. It is about Rachel who is a witch bounty hunter as she strikes off on her own with her partner Ivy to do to have their own bounty hunting business I guess you could say. So they bring in magical creatures and she's also kind of working with the oh I think it's the FBI and she used to work for like the magical version of the FBI so they while the FBI went after humans they went after magical creatures who basically did kind of the same things when you get on like the FBI's most wanted list. So I really did enjoy this one like the different turn into it but there was a part at the towards the ending of this book that just kind of broke my heart because Ivy uh, Rachel's roommate slash partner. She is a vampire, a living vampire, which means that uh, her mother was infected with the vampire virus, kind of, when she was pregnant with Ivy. And so her mom, once giving birth to Ivy, eventually died and became a full vampire. And Ivy is still a living vampire, meaning because she was in her mom's belly when her mom got infected, she has the vampire strain too. But she still has a heartbeat and she can eat food and all that. And she will not become a true vampire until she dies. And there's a part of the end of this book that Ivy was just so broken. It was just heartbreaking. And even though what happened to her wasn't physically rape, what actually did happen to her, what I guess would be the vampire equivalent of rape, because Ivy is not a practicing vampire which means she does not drink blood from a living source. She gets it from like uh, butchers and things like that or she just won't drink it at all and somebody forced her to drink blood towards the end of this book and she was just like a little kid and she was just so broken and while I'm looking to see how what happens with Ivy in the next book, I'm also looking forward to see what happens with Rachel in the next book. I believe I gave this one a three star rating. Next I have Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. This is about a girl named Esme who is supposed who has this mark on her back that marks her as the daughter of the god of death. And when Esme is, I wanna say like 14 or 15, maybe 16. I, I draw that line at 16 and she is her father gives her away to a man that's pretty much like her father he is gross and brutish and he's just not a nice guy but when that man goes to claim his right as her husband on their wedding night he sees the mark and immediately leaves to get like a priest or something to I don't know, exercise her or burn her as a witch. I don't honestly know what his plan was. Another priest comes and takes Esme away before her husband can get back and takes her to this nunnery. Um, I can't remember what the name of the nunnery is, but basically these nuns train girls to be assassins for the god of death. 
and all, all of them has a mark marking them as a daughter of the god of death and so Esme goes to this school and she learns all different types of poisons, way to kill a man, fighting, uh, shooting bows and arrows and all that awesome stuff and this is set back in the I want to say it's like the 1500s I think 1485 so pretty close so this is set back in the 14 late 1400s and Esme is eventually out of one of her jobs she kills somebody who supposedly is supposed to be helping their kingdom uh fight off France from taking over and so because of what she did they were unable to get some sort of information from him so Esme goes to the royal court and helps protect the duchess and try and uh, find find who are the traitors in her court and all this other stuff and sh there are some badass assassin moments but a lot of it's kind of political intrigue which I was a, kind of a little bored with but it was kind of interesting to see and the romance is pretty nice too um and I believe I gave this a 3.5 next I read Alex and Ada volume one this is about a guy who's I think it's his grandmother gives him a robot for his birthday and along the way he ends up kind of wanting her to not just kind of be like an interface but he wants her to kind of be more of a person herself and so he ends up finding these other people who kind of want the same thing and then he ends up meeting another robot like Ava or who used to be like Ava who was kind of jailbroken in a sense in a way that it kind of like cuts them off from the initial network and allows them to grow themselves as people and that's pretty much where this book ends and it is pretty good the art's pretty is uh, pretty nice although it's not quite what i thought it would be uh, but it is nice and i do think i want to continue on with this because it was kind of interesting and i think i'll give i think i gave this one a three star rating maybe 3.5 next is radiant darkness by emily whiteman and this is a hades and persephone retelling although this one's definitely the more most pg one i've ever read there is no sex in this whatsoever there's barely i think maybe three times throughout this entire book do they you actually see them kissing although it does mention that they share a bed it doesn't mention anything about what they do in that bed or anything of it so this is what if Persephone again was locked up in her mother's garden and Hades somehow found a way to come see her eventually after them seeing each other for weeks and weeks without anybody noting anybody knowing uh, Hades convinces Persephone to come away with him and become his queen and then it pretty much develops like you would imagine her getting used to being queen her mother going on a complete rampage of the mortal world and then eventually Persephone herself agrees to come back I think hold on a second I think she agrees to come back Persephone herself agrees to come back because she knows that her mother will not stop no matter what and she finally gets her mother to agree you know I'll spend half the year with you half the year with him everything will be fine because I'm not leaving my husband no matter what you say and if you continue try I'm just gonna go back home anyway so uh it was nice like I said the most PG one I've ever read so if you've read other Hades and Persephone retellings and you just found them too erotic this would probably be the one for you because like I said they barely kissed three times in this book that I can recall okay this next one I know I read during Halloween because it was the one book I wanted to read during Halloween and that is The Dead House by Dawn Kurt Kirchich I think is how you pronounce her name and this one is actually a dual cover book I actually didn't recognize this book at first because while it sounded familiar once I took off the cover and I saw that undercover I recognized it immediately because this is okay, this is actually the pay, the cover it has on the Goodreads page so uh, yeah so this is about a girl two girls technically named Carly and Katie I think it is Carly and Katie yes so Carly and Katie are a per are a, a single girl with a split personality though some people say that she's actually just crazy and that even though both of them say that it has always been the two of them they have always been two separate people one day one night of course their psychologist thinks that they're crazy and so they get sent to the, in, an institution after their parents die and things develop from there there's 
this book can kind of be seen in two different ways it kind of lets you decide for yourself is she really crazy and all this stuff is really in her head or is all this magical stuff or supernatural stuff I should say really happening and especially the ending you kind of have to decide for yourself and all and this is told in journal entries video recordings police reports and all sorts of things like that so in a way it's kind of like Illuminae and it was it definitely had its creepy moments because I listened to this the audiobook of this mainly and there was a point in the audiobook that was so creepy that I was driving on the freeway and I actually had to look into my back seat for a second and yeah so definitely some creepy parts in this not as creepy as I was hoping but definitely creepy parts and I think I gave this one three stars. Next I have The Princess Bride book one uh, by Mae Cabot. This is well the princess princess brides I said the princess brides didn't I? <laughs> the princess diaries uh, by Mae Cabot and this is the first book in the series I think there's like 12 books or so that range from when Mia first finds out she's a princess until she is a queen I think there might actually be more than 12 now that I think about it because that's kind of a lot that happens but this ranges in the movie as far as I can remember some things that happened in the second movie actually happened in this one and some things that happened in the first one don't seem to have happened at least in this one yet but this ranges from when Mia is just a normal girl to when she finds out she's a princess to her makeover to after her fight with Lily and the prom and that dance thing that they were supposed to go to and Joe is actually not in here or may unless they just like named him a different character or he was just added into the movie he was not in this book but I did not like it I love the movie both of them I loved them both Anne Hathaway was awesome but I did not like Mia in this book at all she was whined about everything I mean from her makeover which I get it she didn't want to be blonde I get it but don't just don't constantly whine about it or whining that she's a princess which I could again she's just a normal 15 16 year old girl she just wants to be normal I get it but don't constantly whine about the same things over and over and over although her mom dating her math teacher I want to say I can understand why she whined about that especially when the two of them when they at when Mia f kind of first said okay I'm fine with you two dating but just don't talk about me you know don't talk about when you two are together don't talk about me if you talk about me it's fine but don't talk about like my schooling and stuff and I'm having my teacher over lecturing me about my grades when this is home this is like my safe place where school is not allowed things like that did happen so I understand her whining about that and I actually agree because I would have hated for my mother to date one of my teachers and then all of a sudden over breakfast he starts saying so we have that math test coming up today you got to really bring your grades up and then of course mom starts getting into that too so yeah but other than that she whined about things that she didn't need to whine about constantly but I think I gave this one a two star I might have given it a one but I think it was a two okay this one I also know I read back in October because it was a book well that I wanted to read in October plus I think it came out in October and I read it in me I started reading it almost immediately and that is Hunting Prince Dracula by Mary Cat Maniscalco this is the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper and it starts off a few weeks maybe a month after uh, her father agreeing to let her go to a school where she can learn how to be a, for a forensic scientist you know autopsy and cadavers and all that stuff um, she goes to this school only once they get there they find out that they haven't actually been accepted they've been accepted to try to get into the school and yeah so that was like a big boom to their balloon because they're like okay we've come all this way packed all of our stuff and now you're telling us we have not been accepted so they have to go through these trials and tests to prove that they belong at the school which if you ask me I honestly think Aubrey and Thomas were the best students at this school and there's someone going around killing people in the way a vampire would by sucking out all of their blood and the of course like last time Aubrey and Thomas try and find out who this person is though it is not 
Well, actually, this time, I, since I knew a little bit more about how Carrie's mind works, I actually did guess the killer. For a split second, I doubted it. And then I was like, no, it's got to be this person because it, it, the only thing that kind of makes sense. Every other person who Aubrey thought it could be didn't make a lot of sense. But I was right. And I gave this one a four star rating and I can't wait for number three. And I hear now that there is actually going to be a fourth book.